Member Island Marine Conservation Area is one among the five MPAs in Zanzibar, which is surrounded by coral reef and uh, fish stocks. And Beyond has been present on Member since the early 90s, but we're very much community and conservation driven. The business model on Member is ecotourism on the island is a lodge and it's very dependent on the ecological status of the atoll. It's very important for us to ensure that the atoll is conserved properly. Over the past 20 years, we've noticed quite a decline in the coral status around the atoll. Like a mass tourism, because you can see up to 300 boats in the same day, it's too much. That's why uh, coral reefs are degraded, it's remaining only 20%. Between 2019 and 2022, we had over 800% increase in tourism, in tourists on that reef. The member house reef reduced its coral cover by 55%. So that's why we decided to, to talk with the and Beyond and the Africa Foundation, government and the community. We signed a contact in the Ministry of Blue Economy and Fisheries, so we'll collaborate and develop this area together and they conserve it in, in collaboration. Since the establishment of the Ministry of Blue Economy in Zanzibar, we've made some really good progress. The long-term plan is to really bring back the ecological status of the marine environment. The artificial reef is an important component of the bigger conservation picture of, of Member. It provides an alternative site for snorkeling and diving, which reduces pressures on the other shallow water reefs, increased revenue potential for the boat operators, and it's part of the bigger co-management agreement that and beyond has with the Ministry of Blue Economy for the Member Island Marine Special Area that is around Member Island. So a special area before it was 200 meters, both sides at Kichwani and Hose, but uh, now we increased it to five, 500 meters. This program is very good. It will minimize the number of tourists visiting this area. So 85 instead of 300 or 200. If we increase this area, we can increase also the fee, $25. Instead of $3 and a lot of people, if we can minimize the number of tourists to come here, we can increase the fund and the benefit to the local community will be better than this time. It will increase the, the financial conservation revenues to the communities by 1100% uh, and more, um, which is significant to the communities. Once these artificial reefs are fully productive and the corals have grown to maturity, it increases the diversity of the ecosystem. This is more coral, there'll be more fish, more fish for fishermen, a more resilient system. We depend on the environment. Fishes is food to us. We're going to catch fish and sell. So you can see our, la our wool Whole, whole life is progressed as a result of this environment. Beach boy and also boat captain depend to the ocean. This environment important to them, to their, their work. They have to use the environment clearly without destroying them. So blue economy needs health ocean with health beach and a coral reef should be rather than before. Do the artificial reefs, so obviously the first phase was, was research on the ecological viability of this. We raised funding from and beyond and from IOKA through Africa Foundation and our Oceans Without Borders program. Then we engaged with the communities and asked them um, what they thought and where they would like to see the, the reef being built. Then the first, first step was to build the structures they made out of metal reef bar. It takes about five to six days to get all six structures made. We drew a figure in the, in the sand and then we used metal to bend the rebar and get into the shapes required to weld it together in order to make the structures. And then we got an intern welder who came from the local community and he came and he learned how you create strong structures using rebar and welding. Being rainy season, it's very hard to weld in the rain, so that was a big challenge. So in order to get the structure into the water, it takes four 200 litre containers tied to the structures. We then get about five or six people to carry the structures to the water and we launch it into the water like that. So the structures are placed about three kilometres just off Member Island. So they fall into the Mimka protected area. Um, so it's still 
protected under the Fisheries Act. And it's also been selected by the shareholders of the local communities and they've used to say that that's the best area that they feel for the, for the Artificial Reef to be. And coincidentally their, their preference was exactly the sites that we chose. I brought in two specialists who do a lot of um, work on artificial reefs and they helped locate the site so that all worked very nicely. Then the next phase is to um, fill them with large coral rock. It's very important that the rocks are large and they don't move in the current. And then the third phase is to repopulate it with coral from the coral nursery. It fits in nicely with our coral restoration program on, this, on these degraded reefs. So we have very depth, some shallow, some deep, so it can facilitate divers and snorkelers. And then also the ecologically that they were deep enough so the corals stay cool, so they don't bleach, and also close enough to some natural corals so you get cross-population from corals and other organisms onto the artificial reef. Um, obviously our CNC team, they are from the communities and they've been trained over a period of two years in internships, how to grow corals, how to maintain the corals. And then the, the last ongoing phase is continued monitoring of the artificial reefs and how they're doing. So the artificial reef will take a lot of tourist pressure off the member house reef. We are busy with the restoration program of that reef, so it will also ensure that that restoration program works, which is phase one. Obviously phase two would be once we've restored the house reef, we'll then start working with, with the Ministry of Blue Economy on restorations of other shallow reefs around the atoll. My hopes for the project are that you know, it'll bring its own unique characteristic to, to Zanzibar with the turtle and the starfish. It's very exciting to have more opportunities for people to go onto reefs to see different types of marine life. All government through blue economy and the fisheries, private sectors and beyond and the local community, all of us will benefit from, from increasing this area. So yeah, it brings together a nice big conservation and community involvement and development program that's, that will work really well. The governments have indicated that uh, if this model works, they will duplicate it in other areas around Zanzibar.